Hey guys, the purpose of this video is to explain activity-based costing to you. So the purpose of activity-based costing is going to be to uh, help us figure out which products and customers are the most profitable. The activity-based costing mindset is cause and effect. Making products requires performing activities. Performing those activities consume resources. And those resources, of, co of course, cost us money. In this chapter of the book, we discuss three different methods of allocating factory overhead cost. One of them is going to be using a single plant-wide factory overhead rate method. This would be like if you were painting a room and um, you used a, one of those big rollers to paint it. It's not very precise at all. And in most cases, this is not going to be a very good way to uh, allocate that factory overhead. But if a company only makes maybe one product, this would work just fine. Getting a little more precise, this would be maybe just a regular size paintbrush here. And this would include multiple production department factory overhead rate method. So instead of having a big roller, we have a slightly smaller brush. So the analogy, or the purpose of that analogy is to show that it's a little more precise than the single plant-wide factory overhead rate, but it's not as precise as activity-based costing method. And you could think of this as a, a, a small, tiny paintbrush that you would do if you were uh, painting a portrait of somebody. Now keep in mind that what we're discussing allocating here is overhead. Direct materials and direct labor we can, it's not hard to establish a connection between what consumes those resources. We know how much um, direct materials go into a product. We know how much labor it takes. It's the overhead, those indirect costs that are so difficult to assign. That's what we're talking about here. So using the single plant-wide factory overhead rate method, all of the factory overhead is allocated to all products using only one rate. So like I said, this is quick and easy to use, but it can be fairly, um, or, or it lacks precision. So in this example, Ruez Company manufactures two products, snowmobiles and riding mowers. Both products are manufactured in a single factory. There is $1.6 million of factory overhead budgeted for the period. Each product is budgeted at 10,000 direct labor hours as shown below. So we can see here that they both require 10,000 hours. We're making 1,000 units of each of these, and they each require 10 hours of uh, direct labor hours. So we're looking at 10,000 budgeted direct labor hours plus 10,000 budgeted direct labor hours gives us 20,000 hours. If we were going to try to figure out a plant-wide overhead um, rate in, in, in a way to allocate all of this overhead, and if we were just using that one single plant-wide overhead rate of direct labor hours, we would take the total amount of factory overhead and divide it by the total of those direct labor hours, and we're going to get $80 per direct labor hour. Now we're going to see as we work through the slideshow that this is not going to be very precise at all and if we were making big important decisions based on this information we might end up making a bad choice. So remember it takes 10 direct labor hours per um, unit and we have a total of $80 is our um, <clears throat> overhead that we decided we're going to allocate at $80 per direct labor hour. So each of those is going to receive $800. The riding mower and the snow and the snowmobile and the riding mower are each going to receive $800 of factory overhead cost per unit. Feel free to pause the slideshow here if you. As I mentioned before, it's a simple method. It's inex inexpensive to apply in practice. It might work fine or, or might be uh, well suited if only one or a few products are produced, but it can lead to bad decision making if many products are used. So getting a little more precise here, we might have a factory overhead rate for each department. So this multiple production department factory overhead rate method uses different rates for each production department to allocate factory overhead costs to products. So instead of just one factory overhead rate, now we're going to have one for the fabrication department. In this case, there is a second department, the assembly department. Both of those are going to be involved in determining how we allocate or how we um, divide up that factory overhead. So let's just say here that um, the total of $1,030,000 is the total amount of overhead related to the fabrication department. And let's just say that $570,000 is the amount of overhead 
related to the assembly department. If we divide that by the total number of direct labor hours, we end up getting $103 per direct labor hour. That's our overhead for that fabrication department, so it's more expensive than the assembly department. Here, we only got $57 of overhead per direct labor hour. So we can see now, when we take the number of hours, all this was given in, in your book, it's given to you, but um, and it's given here on this slide as well. We are pretending that it takes eight direct labor hours of fabrication and two direct labor hours of assembly for the snowmobile. And it's just the opposite for the riding mower. It takes two direct labor hours of fabrication and eight direct labor hours of assembly. By the time we multiply these by their respective factory overhead rate per direct labor hour, we end up with $938 of factory overhead going to each snowmobile and only $662 um, dollars of factory overhead going to the riding mower per unit. So we can see as we're getting more precise that maybe the overhead should be a little more heavily applied to the snowmobile. And when we uh, start to look at activity-based costing in a second, we're going to see that the difference is going to be even greater than what we have right now. Feel free to pause the slide here, and you can um, take a second and, and take a look at the distortion of the product cost here, right? So we had 800 for each of these, uh, the mower and the snowmobile. And once we use the multiple departments, we see that there's been a big change, and there's a $138 difference. So as I mentioned before, activity-based costing is going to be the most precise of the three different methods that we have discussed here uh, today. And the activity-based costing method provides an alternative approach for allocating factory overhead. And it's going to use multiple factory overhead rates based on different activities. And activities are the types of work or actions involved in a manufacturing or service process. So if we're using absorption costing, which is uh, required by generally accepting accounting principles, um, there's a lack of precision related to that. And the purpose of activity-based costing, as we mentioned before, is to have a good understanding of what activities will require us to consume those uh, resources that cost us money. And so as a variety of product lines, reduced manpower, and an increased automated production process. Um, as all of that has grown, the use of a single allocation base of direct materials and direct labor I'm sorry, direct materials and direct labor is many times no longer an accurate way to allocate overhead. So just think about the fact that um, if you were to look at an, uh, an automobile assembly plant nowadays versus something um, many years ago when they were making the Model T, you'd notice that there's so many more um, automated procedures that are taking place and robots are doing a lot of the the things that people used to do and typically the cost of those robots and all those automated things that are taking place end up in overhead so we need to really understand and have a better way to allocate our overhead or else we might make some bad decisions so for example one product might take more time in one expensive machine than another product but since the amount of direct labor and materials might be the same, they would be assigned the same amount of overhead under absorption costing. This doesn't make very much sense, does it? And that's not going to be the case under activity-based costing. So we can see here at the bottom in yellow, it says that activity-based costing works great with companies that make many different products that require different activities and that require a substantial amount of overhead. The whole purpose of activity-based costing is to paint a more realistic picture of the way in which expenses are actually created and to more precisely assign these. We do this by identifying the different expense-creating activities in the day-to-day -day operations, calculate and assign a cost to these activities, and then tally up the cost of the numerous activities needed to create a particular unit of product. So let's take a look here at Ruez Company. They make snowmobiles and lawnmowers, remember. And let's take a look here at some of the different activities that are involved in making um, either a snowmobile or a lawnmower. We have fabrication, assembly, setup, quality control inspections, and engineering changes, okay? And we can see here we still have that total 1.6 million, but now we're more interested in these activities, right? Instead of just saying we're going to spread this out based on um, which consumes the most direct labor hours, now we're saying let's allocate this based on which one of uh, those products consumes more of these activities. And we can see how much each of these activities is costing the company here, can't we?
We're going to calculate that activity rate by looking at the budgeted activity cost and divide it by the total activity base usage. Let's see how this plays out. You're probably going to want to pause the screen here for just a couple moments. There's a whole lot of information that's given to us here. Remember that um, the fabrication department for each snowmobile required eight hours there. Two hours was required in the assembly department. Um, and uh, just the opposite for the riding mower, two hours in fabrication and eight hours in assembly. We're making a thousand units. And by the time we extend these or multiply these two together and multiply these two together, we see that we have 8,000 hours related to fabrication, 2,000 hours related to assembly for a total of 10,000 hours. Same thing down here, but the fabrication and assembly cost are vice versa. So remember, we're making 1,000 units of the snowmobiles and 1,000 units of the riding mower. Let's assume here that we have 12 change orders here for the snowmobile, 4 for the riding mower, 100 setups for the snowmobile, and only 20 setups for the riding mower. And setups would be something like uh, when we set up all the machinery to make this product, it takes, times to, or it takes time to calibrate the machinery and get everything just right. Let's also assume that 100 inspections are required for the snowmobile and only 4 inspections are required for the riding mower. If we take all this information and put it together, we can see here we have a total of 10,000 direct to labor hours required for fabrication, 10,000 for assembly, 120 setups, 104 inspections, and 16 of these, um, uh, these are the, uh, the engineering change orders. Okay, so we're going to need this, and we're going to basically, we're going to divide the total cost of each of these activities by the total activity base here. Let's see what it looks like. If we multiply the total cost by the total activity base usage, we get $53 per direct labor hour for fabrication, $7 per direct labor hour for assembly, $4,000 per setup for uh, setup activity, $3,000 per quality control inspection, and $13,000 per engineering change order. Okay? So when we add all these up, we're going to see it's going to cost us $1,294 per snowmobile of overhead and $306 per unit of these riding lawnmowers. We'll take a look how we calculated all of this. Feel free to pause the screen at any time. You can see here we're taking the number of the uh, times we participated in the activity times the rate, and that's giving us the total. We add all this up, we're looking at $1,294,000, which is going to be the amount of overhead related to the snowmobile. We just added the, uh, this is basically the number of uh, times that this, um, acti that this um, unit of activity required us to participate in the activity times that per unit amount of activity that we had calculated earlier. We add them all up and we're looking at $1,294,000 is the total factory overhead for this unit. We divide it by the number of units that we made. Remember that was 1000 and that left us with $1,294. And for the riding mower, same thing. We tally all of these costs up. This is the total cost of all the activities that we participated in. And we only had $306,000. We're going to divide that by the 1,000 units that we made, and we get $306 of overhead for each unit of the riding mower. So we can see instead of having 800 and 800, instead we have 1,294, and we have 306. Let's take a look here. And when we started with a single plant-wide overhead rate, each of these received the same amount of overhead because they each involved the same amount of direct labor hours. As we began using the multiple production department rates, we realized that, hey, the snowmobile was a little more heavy in terms of um, um, the amount of overhead that should be allocated to us. And once we used the most precise method of the three here we're using today, we found that there was a big difference between the amount of overhead that should go to the snowmobile. This required a lot of setups, a lot of change, or a lot of the, uh, these different activities were consumed by the snowmobile. And so it's going to have to shoulder a bigger portion of this overhead than the riding mower. Feel free to pause the screen here at any time as well. 
we can see here that um, if we had used just the single overhead uh, factory overhead wide rate that we might have a, a difference of four hundred and ninety four dollars of underpricing the snowmobile and we would have overpriced the riding mower by four hundred and ninety four dollars we would have assigned four hundred and ninety four dollars more than we should have to that riding mower thanks for taking the time to watch this video please let me know if you have any questions and have a wonderful week